our lesson for February the 28th, 2016, Lesson 13, Unit 3, which is titled Holy Days. Our today's lesson is Heritage and Hope. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Our background scripture is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. And also from the book of Numbers, chapter 29, verses 12 through 40. And Deuteronomy 16, verses 13 through 17. And also... 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 20 through 29, and from the book of Revelations, chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. And our printed text is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. And our key verse, And ye shall dwell in booths seven days, all that are Israelites born shall dwell in Booth, that your generation may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in Booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 23 verses 43, 42 and 43. Heritage and Hope. Our lesson name, as a result of studying this lesson, is that that the student should understand all the aspects of the festivals of booths, a fall grain festival. Point two, to appreciate a faith heritage in which a patient, forgiving, and merciful God guides and protects the faithful. And finally, decide to pass on to the next generation a legacy of faith that God will always guide and protect. Heritage and Hope. The 23rd chapter of the book of Leviticus give us an account of the seven great feasts of the Lord. They were prophetic and a foreshadowing of future events, parts of which have been already fulfilled and parts yet to be fulfilled. They are the shadow of things to come of which Christ is the body. They were holy convocations of the people. They were instituted by the Lord. The people had no voice in the matter whatsoever. And God promised that if the males went up at the set time to Jerusalem to keep these feasts, he would look after their families. The feasts of the Lord are seven in number and to be observed annually. The seven feasts may be divided into two sections of four and three. The first section, which includes the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of First Fruits, and Pentecost. Then there was an interval of four months, followed by the Feast of of trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacle. The three great festivals of these feasts were Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacle. They extended from the 14th day of the first month of the Jewish calendar to the 22nd day of the seventh month. We have to understand that the first four feasts 
foreshadowed truths connected with the present dispensation of grace, which we are in today, and those who form the heavenly people of the Lord, the church. While the last three feasts foreshadowed the blessings in store for God's earthly people, Israel. So we see that in our lesson today that is heritage and hope. Verses 33 and 34 of our lesson states, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seven months shall be the feast of tabernacle for seven days unto the Lord. The fifteenth day of this seven months shall be the feast of tabernacles. For seven days unto the Lord. This feast was one of the three great feasts at which all males was bound to attend and celebrate with more joy than all of the feasts. That they had God required that all the men that they would attend this feast. So we find in verses thirty. 5 and 36 saying, On the first day shall be an holy convocation, and you shall do no severe work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no severe work therein. The feast was to continue eight days. The first and the last of which were to be observed as a Sabbath, a day of rest, of holy rest and convocation, where they would come together in a solemn assembly for for, for worship unto the Lord. And we find in verse verses 37 and through 39 where it states, And these are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, a meal offering, a sacrifice and drink offering, everything upon his day. Besides the Sabbath of the Lord, and besides your gift, and besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offering which ye give unto the Lord. Also in the fifteenth day of the seven months, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. To offer and offerings. This was a feast of in gathering. That is, when they had gathered in the harvest of their land. And that the people, they were to keep this feast in thankfulness to God for all the increase of that year. That they were to celebrate how that the Lord had blessed them in their crops and in, in, in their vineyards. And that they were to rejoice about just how faithful and good that the Lord had been to them. Nothing could be more fitting than at the completion of the harvest of the year than a time of rejoicing and thanksgiving for the year's produce. And today, we celebrate Thanksgiving at the fall of the year, which is the time where, where, where we express 
I thankfulness for, for the goodness of the Lord all through the year. How that how that we should celebrate, I should say. How that the Lord has 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 kept us, how how that he has supplied our needs and that and that it should be a time of reflection and celebration. Not so much about the the, the turkeys and, and the hams and all that, but but about this how that the Lord had provided for our needs all during the year. And so here the people of Israel, they are to express their thanksgiving. And the thanksgiving that they were to express was not to be merely in words, but in deeds. This feast, this feast of tabernacle, this great feast of rejoicing for God blessing him, it started off with the largest burnt offering of any offerings of any of the feasts, consisting of a total of 70 bullocks, beginning with 13 on the first day and diminished by one each day. While these were accompanied daily by burnt offerings of 14 lambs and two rams, the double of what was required for the feast of unleavened bread. And also, they were to offer meal offerings and drink offerings. Nor was this outward ritual expression of thanksgiving was enough. Their gratitude and thankfulness and thanksgiving also was to be shown by taking into their glad festivities the Levites who had no portions, the fatherless and the widows and even the strangers. So many times we want to rejoice and talk about what the Lord has done for us, but we are unwilling to share with others what the Lord has done for us. God blesses us so that we might bless others. Not just that we can hoard and heap to ourselves the, the things that he has done for us and then ignore our brothers and sisters in need. They were commanded by God to help one another. For they was commanded in the book of Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter, verses 13 and 14, saying, Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. After that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine, and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast. Thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy man servant and thy maid servant and the Levites, the stranger and the fatherless and widows that are within thy gate. He blesses us to bless others. So we find written in our lesson in verses 40 through 43 where it states, And ye shall take on the first day the broths of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, the broth of thick trees, and willows of the brooks. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. That your generation may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in boots when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. That your generations may know 
that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. During the first seven days of this feast, all the males were to leave their houses and the women and children in them and to dwell in booths made of the broths of thick trees and branches of palm trees and willows of the brooks. It is not hard to see the connection here of all this with the historical reference to the days of Israel wilderness journey. And God had them to do this lest they might forget God. So many times we tend to forget. We prosper and and, uh, and at the generations, and so we prosper, we start doing good, we, we, we tend to forget. I, we tend to forget and ignore that, how that it was not by our ingenuity, it was not by our might, but it was by the power of God that brought us to the state or to the place that we are today. And God wanted them, he didn't want them to forget, he wanted them to, to remind the generations to come so that they would not forget God. And they were to recall this to their mind by their dwelling in booths. A lot of us is today, even though this is uh, uh, Black History Month, February, Black History Month, a lot of us, we don't know, we forget, or we purposely ignore where we have came from. We do not give homage and, and honor to the things that was gained for us that we have today that we did not always have. How that it was hard for us to find jobs where it was illegal for us to get education but now since we have moved the about many of us we don't even want to talk about that no more that was back then but God just like he told Israel not to forget we need not to forget we need to teach our children our heritage and our history don't you know that if it had not been been for the Lord on our side. We as people, black people here in America, we should have perished as, as a race of people. But it was God that brought us through. We did not deliver ourselves. But it was God that was working on the hearts of men that, that brought us through. And through his mighty power that he raised up men and women that was willing to to die for just for the simple rights that we enjoy today and the ones that we ignore and abuse today. We need to always remind our generation, generation to come about what God had done for us. And then and God didn't want them to forget their beginning and the low and desolate estate out of which God delivered them. They was, you know the story, they was down in Egypt. They had been slaves for 430 years and God heard the cry of his people and that he called Moses and sent Moses to tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And then God had to send plagues upon Egypt so that his to redeem them back from the Egyptians. The Israelites was not strong enough to deliver themselves. They were not mighty enough to overthrow the Egyptians. But it was God that brought them back. And that even when he brought them out, they were just a bunch of slaves, untrained, 
in warfare, didn't know where they was going, had nothing. But it was God that 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 brought them through where he brought them through the wilderness where they was dwelling in booths and tents. The days through those forty years that they that they didn't have no houses, they didn't have no fields or no crops. That they clothes never wore out or their feet never swole. But it, it was God that brought them to. And now since they are over in a place where they had so so quote arrived, where 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 where, where they was prosperous now, where where they didn't didn't need nothing. God wanted them to remember that even in their wilderness wandering, that though they are bringing in great amounts of harvest today, that it was God that fed them with mammoth in the desert. That it was God that gave them a water out of the rock in the desert. It was God that covered them with a with with a, a a a cloud for a canopy from the scorching sun, and that even God had Moses now to build a tabernacle that represented Him dwelling right there in the midst of them. And we find where He said that in in, in Deuteronomy eight eight and three states, and He humbled thee, and that. And suffered thee to hunger, and he fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thou fathers know. That he might make ye know that man do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord our God do man live. We are at a day in time where our people, our young people, our educated people, they they want to ignore God. They they want to fall into the traps of society and, and and Satan and say, well, you know that that there is no such thing as a God that. That is a, a old ancient isms, and it's just a figment of our imagination. They want to say that there there is no need for us to study black history. That that our history is is it is American history, and that's the only history that we should celebrate. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. We we need to teach our kids. We need to teach our kids that it was because of God that we are where we are today. And then maybe now that that if we would teach them and, and remind them and constantly show them that, that it was God that that brought us through all the lynchings and the shirt croppings and the and, and the slavery and the middle of the passage, that, that they might have some pride in themselves. That the young men might Pull their pants up from under they behind, and and, and, and and that the young women might might start having some respect for themselves, and that and that the men might start having some respect for our own women and for our children. God required that the that all the males that all the men will have to come up to his feet and to remember where God has brought them from. That if they would be faithful to him, that he would protect their wives and their kids. My brothers and sisters, we, you know, we need to wake up. We need not to be ashamed of, of who we are and what God has done for us. They have, st- they have stood in the doors of the University of Mississippi in in, in, in in Alabama. They were shot on their way trying to go to school. They had the National Guard down in Little Rock escorting kids to elementary school. And now we sit around and say, well, if if uh 
If 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 little Johnny or, or Shanika don't want to go to school, I ain't gonna make them go to school. Now now we we'll go up to the school and then jump on in the teacher because why? Because the teacher is trying to discipline our children and teach them when they not getting any help from the parents at home where they should be disciplined and also teaching their own children. We talking about heritage and hope. We need to be mindful here that God has showed them that 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 man do not live by bread alone. Even with all these so called so called where we have prospered, where 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 we now living in suburbia. Where, where we now driving Lexus and, 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 and fine cars, where we now having masters and doctrines and, 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 and PhD, but our families, our, our moral character is being destroyed. And we still are looked upon as, 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 as buffoons and, and, and those people that have no soul. We, we need to wake up and change. And so, my brothers and sisters, just just like the Lord's Supper is to us a memorial, Christians, pointing back to the cross and looking forward to the return of, of our coming Lord, and so is the Feast of Tabernacle is a, mono, is a memorial to Israel, pointing back to Egypt, to where God has delivered them from the bondage of slavery. Just like we look back to where Christ had delivered us from the penalty of sin on the cross, and that how that it is pointing to the to the millennial rest for the nation Israel, and not only for Israel, but for all nations. For Zechariah, the 14th chapter in verse 16 states, And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacle. Heritage and hope. We should never forget our, our heritage. The Jewish people, they remind their children constantly of their heritage. They have been dispersed through all the world, but they never, they never have forsaken their heritage. They always teach their families for generations and generations to come about who they are. And so we need to remember our heritage. Our heritage and how that it was God that delivered us. And how that he is faithful. And how that he promised never to leave us or forsake us. And then if we would teach our kids this, and if we would remind each other of this, then maybe our people would live better and not live as they have no hope. May God bless you and keep you.